I want to welcome everyone to today's ATA webinar, Tips for Navigating Your First ATA Annual Conference. And this is so appropriate, right, because the conference is going to be at the end of October in San Diego. Thank you all for attending. We always appreciate your attendance. Today's presenter is Jill Summer. She's a longtime ATA member who's been attending the conference since 2002. She's also presented orientation to newcomers at several of the conferences. My name is Mary David, and I am the webinar coordinator at ATA headquarters. So while we're waiting for a few more attendees to join the webinar, I have a couple of housekeeping notes to mention. First, the webinar is being recorded, and you're all going to get a link to the recording by email, and you can view the link, use the link to view the recording um, forever and ever, basically. Um, you can view it on the ATA website. It'll be sometime within the next five days and on the GoToWebinar site for the next three months, but you always have access to it. This is a 60-minute webinar. Occasionally, we run over a little bit longer. If you need to leave right on time, just do, and you'll be able to catch up when you get the recording. We have a handout for today's presentation. This is a reference document, so you don't need to have it in front of you while the webinar is going on. You'll receive that by email, as well as a PDF file of the actual slide set, so no need to worry about any notes. All attendees are muted. This is really the only way to keep the presentation moving smoothly, but we want you to ask questions, and you can do that throughout the webinar. Just type them into the question box on your screen. We will have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Now, more than likely, we won't have time for all the questions, but we'll get to as many as we have time for. I also want to mention that there's a short survey allowing you to comment on today's presentation presentation, and it should appear on your screen as you exit the webinar. And we do read these survey responses very carefully. carefully. Oh, I can't talk. So please give us your feedback there. And with that, I would like to turn the webinar over to today's presenter, Jill Summer. Hi, everyone. Um, like Mary said, I've been coming to the ATA conferences since 2002, and um, I love the ATA conference. I don't miss it every, any year. Um, it's just a really wonderful time to meet new translators, visit with your old friends, and learn a lot. So without any ado, I will uh, start the presentation. Now there are some preparations that you need to make before you come to the conference, and I know plenty of people that usually forget this, so I want to mention it. Print out plenty of business cards. There are some uh, printing stores probably in near the area in case you forget this. But um, and it has happened. It's even happened to me. Uh, so make sure you have plenty of business cards and you carry them with it, you. Uh, write your resume, and we're going to be having a new mobile app this year um, for smartphones and laptops. And so you can upload it uh, onto the mobile app as soon as it becomes available in mid-September. ATA will be sending you more information about that, and I'm going to preview it in a little bit. Uh, I suggest you register by September 21st for, to get the early bird rate, which is 20% off the conference registration fee. And they suggest that you book your hotel by October 1st. Rooms may run out, but uh, this ensures that you get the ATA uh, rate. Um, it's, we'll talk about some of that later. Okay, so there are some must-haves for the conference. You need to have your business cards. You need to have your resume. And I'll talk about what you need on the resume in a little bit. You need comfortable shoes. And if you're like Rena Neiman, that means stilettos. But for me, I like tennis shoes or, or dress shoes that are flat. You have to have a lot of energy. So make sure you've slept pr pretty well right before the conference and during the conference. And you should think about how you want to present yourself. You know, 30 to 60 seconds about what you, who you are and what you do. And any of these links are on the handout, so you don't have to write them down. That link talks about what an elevator speech is and things to have. So in my case, I'm a German to English translator. I lived in Germany for six years, and I specialize in medical and computer translations. That's my elevator speech. OK, so this is the, what the mobile app is going to look like a little bit. Um, they've designed this app to put the entire conference all in one little app. So you can see who's attending before, check out the program, 
during the conference you can uh, see what's going on and then even after the conference you can contact attendees and uh, exhibitors. Like I said before, it's available on any smartphone and you can also view it on your laptop's browser. So I know some people bring laptops with them to the conference. Only registered attendees are going to be able to have the app. So um, your information is is like in a closed area. So in, the ATA has usually given us lists of re, uh, attendees. Well, now that's all going to be in the mobile app. So if you need to contact someone during the conference, you can easily contact them and organize something through the app. Okay, so like I said, you can. what can you do with this app? You can upload your resume to share it with attendees and exhibitors and potential clients and they'll have it with them if they have the app so that they can go back and go through resumes of all the attendees. So this is going to replace the job market. You can browse the schedule and look, read about the abstract to decide if you want to attend that event or the session and then the bios of all the speakers. And then as things happen, some people have to cancel, people get sick. One guy dropped his laptop right before the session a couple years ago. So as that kind of things happen and a, a session is canceled, they're going to be sent to, to you through the mobile app. Okay, so there's also going to be interactive floor plans. So you can see where the booths are and then you can also probably click on the websites to visit their websites. And you can contact every other attendee there to arrange a meeting or a lunch or, you know, let's get together for coffee or whatever. Like I know my blog readers, we usually arrange a lunch and I'll probably end up doing it that way. Okay, they're also going to have uh, suggestions on places to eat and visit and maps and things like that. And all within the app, you're going to be able to check your Facebook's page and your, you can tweet at, and you can check it through LinkedIn. Now, if you're going to tweet about the conference, use the hashtag ATA53. That way you can read all the tweets on Twitter. Like I said, they're going to send instructions mid-September and or when you've registered for the conference if you haven't already. I tend to register in July, so, but I'm an overachieving German translator, so, okay. I told you I'd suggest some resume tips. This is what my resume looked like back when we had the job market, and what that was was it was a table where everybody put their resumes and business cards out, and some of us used stands. We're not going to have to do that anymore. It's going to be wonderful. So some resume tips on how to write the resume. Your resume should indicate your languages and the direction at the top. That means any potential client, if they're looking for a German to English translator, they can look at the resume and see right at a glance, oh, this is a German to English translator, this is somebody I want to work with. Make sure you include your contact information. You know, you don't necessarily have to share your address if you don't want to, but an email address and a phone number at minimum. And then I like to put little bit bullet points at the top of my resume so that they see my translation skills and specializations at a glance. So for me, my qualifications would be uh, worked for the FBI for four years, um, specialized in this, or I went to Kent State and got an MA in translation in 1995. Anything that makes you stand out, you want to put up at the top so that the client doesn't have to dig through the resume to try to find it. And nobody cares about your ability to work well with others <laughs> because we all work well from home. So, Okay, uh, another important thing about resumes, make sure that there's no spelling and grammar errors. I mean, this is our bread and butter. Make sure there's no errors. Uh, have a couple people read it. You know, any spelling or grammar errors just shows that you might not show the same necessary care for your translation. Try to keep it to one to two pages. Brief is better. Uh, for some of you that are overseas, it's important to note that you shouldn't include your marital status, date of birth, how many children you have, your religion, or any other personal information such as that. That information is not necessarily important for working as a translator. And you really don't need an objective. Everybody knows the objective of a resume is to start working with somebody. 
and um, you really don't need to list your hardware or software programs. Uh, everybody works with MS Word, but translation tools and operating platforms are helpful. So if you work with MemoQ, if you work with Trado Studio 2011, uh, if you work with Trados 2007, if you work with Deja Vu, those are helpful because clients are looking for translators who work with the tools that they work with. And I, again, I've included some more links for more tips on how to write a resume. There, there are two very good articles about what should and shouldn't be included, and from written from agency owners' points of view. Okay, in addition to the resume, business cards are very important. Try to keep them simple. You don't want to overload the card with information. And, you know, one font, two fonts is plenty. They don't have to be fancy. You know, a white page with just your name and contact information works. But they should be legible, and your latest contact information should be there. It's kind of tacky if you're crossing out information. So if you have a new email address, get new cards printed before the conference. It, it's much appreciated and it looks just much more professional. I know some people play with different size business cards. It's probably a good idea to keep it to three and a half by two inches. That's the standard business card in the US. Um, I know I had a business card in Germany that was kind of a square that was folded and it just doesn't fit as well in the organizers. So three and a half inches by two inches. You might want to consider something like a bilingual card where you have on the front one language, on the back the other language. Or one thing that I have on my business card is I have a, an area in the back to write how and where you met the person. So at the conference you're going to meet a lot of people and talk with a lot of people and exchange a lot of business cards. It's very helpful after you walk away or take a break. Just write how you remember them so that when you contact them again you, you can remember who they are and how you met them. And then make sure your card reflects your brand. My cards look like my website. I, it's kind of a corporate identity thing, but it just shows that you put a little extra effort and professionalism into your business cards. And one more time, I can't stress this enough, make sure you bring them with you and carry them with you. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through the conference a little bit. What happens? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to check in at the registration booth. This picture is what our registration booths look like. If you've pre-registered, um, go by the last name and look for your initial. So for me, I go to P through Z because I'm the summer. And then there's the on-site registration. There is where you get the, your bag, your final program, any cards and uh, tickets for events that you've pre-purchased, your ribbons, and your name tag. So once you've picked up your stuff, you're going to need your ID. You're going to need a to present your photo ID to show that you are who you are. And for any of you first-time attendees, you're going to get a pink ribbon that you put at the bottom of your ID tag. Now, just one little insider tip. You might want to bring super glue or a stapler because these ribbons tend to fall off. Just a little hint. You're also going to want to mark your bag with a business card, ribbon, or identifier. So some of the bags sometimes have business card slots where you can just slip a business card in. You might want to bring a ribbon to tie around the bag because we're all going to be carrying around the same bag. And then you also want to get a language dot for your language at the hospitality desk. And the hospitality desk is off to the side from the registration desk and they have little language dots. So all the blue is German, all the red is Japanese, all the green I think is Spanish. So every little language has its own language dot. And if you have multiple languages, you're allowed to put uh, several language dots on your name tag. And for those of the limited diffusion names or languages, there's little, I don't know what you call it, little stickers where you can write what language you do. And it's an easy way to see who's working in your language and to go talk to them. So if you see a blue language dot, you're going to go up to them and know that they're, they work in German so that you immediately have something to talk about. So this is a picture of the hospitality desk in Denver. Uh, so that was a couple years ago. Usually they are manned by the local 
Association, and they have information that's probably going to be in the mobile app as well, but things to look at, tips for the city, that kind of thing. Um, so this time, the hospitality desk is going to be staffed by the Association of Translators and Interpreters in the San Diego area, and they have also set up a blog filled with a bunch of tips at atasandiego2012.wordpress.com. This again is going to be at the handout. You don't on the handout. You don't need to write it down. Okay. There's some question as to whether the message board is going to be around or not. What the message board is is it's a way to talk with or to write a note for anybody in the conference that's I don't know interested in flamenco. We're going to go to a flamenco bar or things like that. And so there's basically notepads that people could write messages on and thumbtacks and um, Hopefully the message board will be replaced by the mobile app because a lot of people don't think to look at it. And also it's helpful if you're looking for a roommate for the last night because your roommate's left early. Sometimes people will write on the message board, need somebody for Saturday night. And then also a lot of vendors and clients post possible jobs that they're looking for. So if they're looking for Portuguese translators, they might just post it on the message board as well. Okay, so I know I talked about the name badge a little bit. This is what the name badge looks like. As you can see, you can see the little blue ribbon underneath for the chapter president, and you see four different language dots. So you see, you, you wear that around your neck. It's sponsored by one of our sponsors for the conference, and it's really kind of neat. So you're, you can see at a glance where people are from and what languages they work in. So, like I said, color dots are a really good icebreaker. Um, I carry my business cards in my name badge so that I don't have to put them in a pocket. And then sometimes the, language, the name badges have separate pockets. So I have my business cards in one pocket, and then in another pocket I'll put the business cards of the people that I met. So that's very handy, and you don't have to carry things around with you. Okay, one thing that you might have noticed if you looked at the preliminary seminar, uh, preliminary program is that there are pre-conference seminars. What these are are three-hour in-depth sessions about specific areas that you might want to be interested in you know, learning more about. There's usually a session on being a better translator or how to market your translation business better. Um, I'm really looking forward to one about terminology this year. And all the seminars, seminars take place the day of Wednesday, October 24th. So there's a session from 9 to noon and then from 2 to 5. And those are extra. You have to pre-register, so sign up for them when you register with ATA. And, you know, they're probably like $50. They really are worth the extra money. Uh, you really learn a lot because in the sessions you do learn, but they're hour-long sessions or half-hour-long sessions, and this way you get a little bit more in-depth knowledge. Okay, so after the pre-conference sessions, there are some special events that are going on during the day as well for uh, local uh, you know, board members and things like that. So if you are a board member of your local chapter, you might want to consider coming early and attending one of these. The first one is Jurassic Parliament, running smooth, efficient, and fair board meetings, and then leadership training for division, chapter, and affiliate group leaders. So those are held on Wednesday. If you want to attend, send an invitation to conference at atanet.org. Okay, so then Wednesday night is the reception. Thursday, there's also some special events. Uh, there's a special series this year called The Future of Translation and Interpreting from 11 in the morning until noon. And there, it's going to be kind of a panel discussion talking about different views on translation in the interpreting industry. And then there's going to be some commenting afterwards and debating. So that sounds really interesting. I wanted to definitely mention it. Okay, so I mentioned the welcome reception. That is Wednesday night. It can be very overwhelming, especially for first-time attendees. Don't get overwhelmed. Uh, what it is is it's just a little reception where everybody gets together and eats a little bit of food and has a couple drinks. and. A lot of times you'll see people talking to each other and they might not know each other. I know it's intimidating as a first time attendee to go to a conference where you don't know anybody. 
Well, the best way to do that is just to go go up to somebody else that kind of looks like they they don't know what they're doing, or go to up to another person with a first time attendees ribbon, the pink ribbons I mentioned before, and start talking to them. And this is just a nice way to get to know some people. And you can mix and mingle. You can sit in the side. I sit in the corner with a couple friends, and I'm a little bit more introverted, so I, I tend to just watch. It's very good people watching. Okay, it's Wednesday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Like I said, if you don't know anybody, just go up to somebody with your language dot or a first-time attendees ribbon and start talking. And, you know, like I said, don't think that you're interrupting. You won't be. We're all here to meet people and network, and it's really not as intimidating as, as it seems. Also, one thing I learned the hard way, the drink chips that you get when you register are only good at the welcome reception. So I think you get two drink chips. Be sure to use them or lose them. Okay, after the welcome reception, we'll all kind of flow out to the division open house. So this is more, um, um, more I don't know, condensed way to meet people in your divisions. And uh, it's from 7 to 8 p.m. And you follow, you find your division or a division you're interested in meet, joining and you go and talk with people. So you can division hop if you want. You can just go to, like for me, the German language division and talk with people. And the divisions put some effort into the open houses to make them unique. So the Germans have German music and German chocolate. And I'm sure the other languages have other, I mean, I can't speak for them. But also, you might want to consider poking into the medical division. Uh, science and technology division, language, or, uh, sorry, language technology division, any division that sounds interesting to you, you know, go check them out. Okay, then the next morning, after a good night's sleep, or not, you go to the opening session in the ATA elections. The opening session is usually at 8 in the morning, and it officially opens the conference. Usually there's, the city is doing something to welcome you. Uh, I know when we were in San Francisco, we had a, a Japanese lion from Chinatown, or no, a Chinese lion from uh, Chinatown coming and doing the lion dance. And then any important announcements are also mentioned here. So it, this is kind of an important session to visit. So a lot of the stuff you might be familiar with because you've attended this uh, this webinar, but there might other be some other information that's shared. That's how I found out about the massages in the exhibit hall. So, and this is open to all attendees. So, go to the opening session. And then after the opening session, we'll have a little coffee break, and then we're going to have the ATA elections. Now, you have to be an active member to vote. So, if you aren't an active member or certified, you can attend the ATA elections and ask questions but you are not able to vote. So it's, it's very interesting to see uh, the candidates and their, hear their little speeches and hear the questions. And so if, even if you can't vote, it's interesting to go and, and you know, learn who's your board. Also, if you want to vote next year, consider becoming an active member. And you can do that through peer review. And that's how I became an active member. I submitted some forms, sent in a couple customer customer uh, recommendations and was granted peer review. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the program. Sorry if I'm blowing through this, it's just a lot to cover in an hour. Your final program, you've received the preliminary program a couple, uh, last month with the ATA Chronicle. The final program is in the tote bag that you're given when you register and it will also be on the new mobile app. And Again, cancellations and changes are going to be announced through the new mobile app. I'm really excited about this mobile app. It sounds like it's going to be great. Okay, so even if you've printed out the online program on the ATA website and you've taken notes on the plane and you've, what I do is I go through and I circle, you know, maybe two events or sessions that I want to see. You have to read the final program to make sure that, you know, somebody's kid didn't get sick and they had to cancel and things like that. So definitely reads the final program. So the program has a list of events. Um, it has an hour-by-hour -hour calendar so that you can follow along. 
it has a complete description of the sessions. Uh, so if you're not in, if you're not sure what the session's about, read the description and see if that sounds interesting. And then the personal conference planner is a lot of fun. You can write out your schedule and write, you know, which rooms they're in and things like that so you're not walking around blindly. So this guy is planning his day and uh, writing on the, the personal calendar what he's going to attend. And as you can see from the photo, every, every uh, area has a different color. So like the independent contractors is yellow, the German programs are blue, um, and so on and so forth. Language technology has its own division. And so they're broken down into uh, languages and interests. So some session tips for some of you who are brand new to the in industry, and I suggest you attend as many sessions as you can, especially ones focusing on the relationship with clients. All of the independent contractor sessions are really very valuable, and um, they're also valuable if you are not new to the industry, and it might give you uh, some ideas on how to make your business even better. You know, aim for a mix of sessions, try something that you wouldn't necessarily go to. Um, I once went to a, a subtitling session. It was really, really interesting. So, you know, try to, try to expand your horizons a little bit. And, you know, if there's an in area of interest that you're interested in that you're not really sure if it's for you, this might be a way of doing it. So if you're not sure whether did he attend the presentation and you're not sure from the description whether it's right, check out the conference proceedings. Those, it's a, uh, usually a DVD and people, the, the presenters submit papers like a few months before the presentation um, about their subject. So you can read, you know, maybe I think it's like three pages or something like that. And so you can get a better idea of what the presentation is going to be about. Um, one thing I can't stress enough, if you are at a session and you are not, you find that it's not for you, you know, just sit in the back and leave as quietly as possible. We don't care. Uh, at speaking as a presenter, I'd rather have people leave that aren't interested than um, rolling their eyes or, you know, asking questions that bog down the presentation. So if, if the session isn't for you, just leave. Nobody cares. Uh, we're not taking attendance. And, you know, it's, it's for your benefit. Um, I try to attend at least three sessions for the conference. Um, I, you know, there's so many sessions that are going on, you know, I shoot for at least three. You know, this way you can do a little sightseeing or visiting with colleagues or clients. You also might want to consider attending one or more of the tools tutorials. Even if there's a tool that you work with quite often, and I used to be a devotee of Trados. I attended the tools um, tutorials last year for Fluency and MemoQ, and I actually bought both of them, and I've been working with both uh, just based on these tool tutorials. And what the tool tutorials are is the tools vendors are giving you like an hour in-depth tutorial running you through how, the, how each tool works. And it's for beginning and intermediate users of the tools. So even if you work with a tool, you might want to consider going to the tool tutorial because you might learn some tips. And they're either hands-on workshops or lecture-style presentations. And they're very interesting and very worthwhile. Some people attend the conference just for the tools tutorial. So I highly recommend it. And so if you want to learn more about it, I've included the link here. It will also be in your handout. Okay, so like I said, there's a lot of, pre a lot of sessions going on. What happens, it inevitably happens, there's like two or three sessions that I really want to go to that are all scheduled at the same time. Well, one way to deal with this is you get the ATA e-conference DVD, and for $99, you can go through and listen to every single session that's recorded. And it's very handy, and even for those of you who don't make it to the conference this year, you can still order the e-conference DVD and still learn. So it's very helpful. So they have the, slide, the PowerPoint presentation slides as well as the speakers being recorded. And you get CEU credits for listening to the e-conference DVDs. 
Okay, so those are, that's all about sessions. The other really interesting part of the conference is the exhibit hall. And what that is, is they have, as you can see from the picture, all kinds of hands-on talking to people and tools and dictionaries and things like that. Uh, I try to go to the exhibit hall at least twice. Um, there's a lot of exhibitors there, uh, so you might want to like consider skipping a session and going during a session because there won't be as many people and you can actually sit and talk with the exhibitors. Uh, I know Trados runs their presentation quite often for various groups. And then um, if you go to an exhibit hall and maybe the booth is unattended because the person was the only one person there and they have to go to a session. So it's important to go back several times. It's also a really cool place to be. It's quiet, it's friendly, and most of the vendors have chocolate or goodies and there's coffee in the corner. And my most favorite thing about the conference is there are chair massages. So. Uh, what that is is they, they've hired uh, you know, massage therapists and you sit in a chair for 10 minutes and they give you a massage of your shoulders and your back and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, and I usually slip them a couple, couple bucks and it's just, it's a really good way to relax and anyways. Oh, all right, the exhibit hall. So there's going to be tool vendors, dictionaries, books and reference materials. So there's some publishing companies that are there. Freak from Intrans Books is there. Um, there's all different kinds of things that you can actually look at. Uh, they also have insurance company booths. So that's how I uh, ended up signing up for my health insurance as I talked with somebody from Mutual of Omaha at one of the first conferences. There are translation programs and universities there with booths that are advertising what they offer. Lots of clients and agencies have booths. And the free chair massages. Okay, so networking. It's best if you are just friendly, useful, and genuine. I know that the idea of networking, it can be terrifying for somebody who sits behind a computer, you know, 360 days out of the year and translates. Networking is not that hard. Just be friendly and be genuine. And the goal of networking is basically just to help the other person that you're talking to and putting their needs first. It's not about oh, I'm this and I'm, I'm wonderful, I'm the best translator in the world, it's finding out about the person you're talking with. So ask questions instead of just talking about yourself. And last year I recommended this 24 network tips that actually work. And I highly recommend reading that. It's, the link is on the handout. And Mary liked it so much she ended up sending it to all the ATA members last year. And networking is really important, and you're probably wondering why. Well, first of all, you're meeting people. So word of mouth is the best advertising that you can possibly have. So I get plenty of work just through word of mouth. You know, I've met somebody at the conference, one of my best clients, I was sitting across from him at dinner, and I've been working from him uh, with his company for eight years now. Um, and then if somebody's too busy, and so, so you've met some translator in your language pair and they remember that you work in that field, you know, I don't work in that field or I'm too busy but contact so and so. And so if you aren't networking, you're not getting yourself out there. It's kind of like the agencies aren't going to find you unless you put yourself out there. It's, and then it's not just about getting more work, it's about exchanging ideas, talking to colleagues about non-paying agencies, what to do with invoices, how do you invoice, uh, you know, how much extra coursework do you do, just anything that you want to talk about, it's a great way to just talk with people. Make sure you get your colored dots, wear your first time attendee ribbon, that's that pink ribbon I've mentioned a couple times. It's an icebreaker, people will see your first time attendee ribbon and come up and talk with you. And also it's kind of like your get out of jail free card. You can ask lots and lots of questions. So, you know, if you want to find out where the coffee is, and I apologize for my dog barking in the background. Uh, just smile and ask questions and, you know, just enjoy yourself. And uh, like I said, don't assume we all know each other. I, I met somebody a couple years ago and she said she wanted to talk with me, but I was 
I, it looked like I was talking to somebody and I was engaged in this conversation, so she was intimidated and she didn't come up to me. Well, it turns out I had just met that person, you know, a couple minutes before. So don't assume that everybody knows each other. Uh, there, ATA also offers some ways to network that are built into the conference. The official networking session is called Speed Networking, and it's on Thursday night. It's kind of like speed dating. You get your 36-second pitch ready, you bring your business cards with you, and they do little speed dating, ring the bell, move to the next person. So go in, prepare a few questions that you want to ask everybody, and you know, just you don't have to stay for the whole time. Set yourself a goal. I'm going to talk to three people. I'm going to talk to five people. And if you like it, just keep on going. Breakfast is a great time to network. You know, you've got your free food. Nobody's tired. Well, later on in the conference, people are tired. But then you can commiserate about being tired together and having been out last night. And nobody's running between sessions. Uh, between sessions can be kind of stressful. They're you know, running to get coffee, running to the bathroom, running up to their rooms. And so it's really kind of hard to sit down and actually talk with people. And then some of the divisions have receptions at breakfast. And then there's also a great, the board sits together and you have the opportunity to go talk with them and talk with them about your concerns. So and last year, somebody mentioned, well, why, were, why are there no presentations in Arabic? The reason that your language or your field might not have as many sessions as you want is because people haven't submitted a proposal. So if you're upset that your language or your subject matter doesn't have a session, consider submitting a, a session proposal next year. And those are due usually in March. And the sessions in the conference are planned based on the proposals that are submitted. So, you know, the conference is all about you and if you want to you know, learn more about it, set up a panel discussion, you know, join what your, one of your listservs and discuss with your fellow listserv members what you want to, what you want to see. And the best way to get involved is to network, or no, I'm sorry, the best way to network is to get involved. Get involved in your local chapter, you know, write the newsletter, volunteer as the secretary, uh, get involved in your division, off, you know, write on the listservs, Take, take the minutes at the conference, you know, present at conferences, write an article for the ATA Chronicle. I have plenty of people who know me just because I've written articles for the ATA Chronicle or they've gone to one of my conference sessions. Uh, it, it's a really good way to get yourself out there. Okay, and then you might want to think more about it, putting face-to-face -face networking work for your business. On October 4th, there's an upcoming ATA webinar, and it's being held by somebody who's not an ATA member. It's somebody who actually works in marketing. So I, I highly recommend attending the webinar if you're, if you're still not sure how networking works. Okay, in addition to sessions, there are some non-session events that you might want to consider going to. Most divisions have a reception. You have to buy a ticket ahead of time. Uh, the certification exam you need to register ahead of time. There is a yoga slash tai chi session every morning from 6.30 to 7.30 called Stretch, Breathe, and Move. And it's a really good way to, you know, stretch, breathe, and move and prepare yourself for the day. People show up in yoga pants and ratty t-shirts and do a little bit of, you know, stretching. Uh, the literary division has an after hours cafe on Friday night. That's always very interesting. Consider going to the business practices happy hour and talk about various business events and, and non-paying clients and what to do with this and how do you make sure an agency that's contacted you is going to pay you. That is all you know, fair game at the happy hour. Consider staying for the conference dance on Saturday night. It's always a good time. Most conferences don't have a dance. Uh, this one is just filled with samba and all kinds of really cool Latin music and people dancing and just enjoying themselves. And then as you go through the exhibit hall and are talking to companies and vendors, talk, uh, think about going to some of their private receptions. Trados has a reception every year that is usually filled. I know uh, MemoQ had a session last year that was very well received and 
at Trados, at the Trados reception, you can win things like I won a Trados software package a few years ago. So it's a great way to eat for free and talk with people that use those tools. Okay, so let's talk about the certification exam because some of you are probably going to take the certification exam. You cannot register for the exam at the conference. You need to register beforehand. And we highly recommend you take the practice tests because uh, it gives you an idea of whether you, you have a chance of passing or not. The pass, pass rate for the certification exam is 20%. So it's really important that you are fresh when you're taking the exam, that you're focused, and so you need to spend some time preparing. There's a session called Preparing to Take the ATA Certification Exam on Friday. You can go to that and ask any questions. You know, rest up. Bring food and water with you. They do allow you to bring that. Um, bring a sweater and a co or a coat, and that's kind of important for the conference in general because the hotel might be cold. So you might want to bring a sweater with you uh, to the conference, in, not just for the certification exam, just to make sure you're cozy and not freezing. Also, you're, you want to unwrap anything crinkly, so if you have lozenges that you're going to use during the conference, unwrap those before you take the exam. There's nothing worse than somebody trying to focus on the exam question and somebody's opening a, I don't know, a trail bar or whatever. My friend brings them in, in uh, Ziploc bags, and she also brings a Ziploc bag of tissues if you need, need that kind of stuff. She's, she proctors, so. Okay, um, we're not in a bubble, and so when you're at a conference, you have to remember that you know, you're out in the real world and people come into the hotel and you just need to react as if you were in a foreign country or at home. You, you just need to use some caution and, co and common sense. Uh, somebody's laptop was stolen last year. Uh, somebody's resumes were stolen last year. You know, it's people in hotels tell you to not keep valuables in the room as it is. So just don't bring anything super valuable. And if you have a laptop with you, make sure it's with you at all times. I have it hanging on my shoulder. People can come in from the, off the street and blend into the crowd and pretend they're one of us, and uh, no one will question it. So just be careful. When you leave something, look back. Make sure that you have everything with you. Don't just put your laptop down next to the bartender because it might disappear. Also, if you are bringing your laptop, you might want to consider installing encryption on it. The Language Technology Division recommends using TrueCrypt, and it's a generally a good idea to encrypt your data anyways because, you know, a laptop can be replaced, but all your data with your client's data, that's, some of it is confidential, that's priceless. So if you're going to bring your laptop to the conference, encrypt your data. Okay, some miscellaneous tips about the conference. Make sure you fill out the feedback forms. They might do this as part of the mobile app. Um, I'm not quite sure, but they give out prizes every day. They, they pick one or two feedback forms every day. And then at the end, somebody re wins a free conference registration for the next year. I know this happens because it happened to me that my first year of attending. I filled out the feedback form and won a conference registration for the next year. It, it's very cool. Uh, some of the prizes are ATA t-shirts and, and baseball caps and books and things like that. So, and you're giving your feedback for the organizers so they know what works and what doesn't work for next year. Carry as little with you as possible. Empty the bag of anything heavy as soon as you've registered. You know, wear comfortable shoes and clothing. Uh, I usually just wear pants and a blouse and you really don't need to wear a suit. You know, just business casual and comfortable shoes so your feet don't hurt. And then, again, when you're leaving your spot from after a session, look behind, make sure you haven't dropped anything or forgotten anything, your water bottle or whatever. Another safety tip, take your name badge off when you leave the hotel. Nothing screams, hey, I'm a tourist, rob me, like wearing your name badge. So as soon as you walk out of the hotel, take your name badge off. Um, also, this is not a language practice event. Um, if you're with people outside your division that don't speak your language, you know, talk in English because it's just common courtesy. Don't attend too many sessions. You don't need to attend every single session on the, on the program. 
give yourself some downtime. You know, go to the exhibit hall, meet with friends, have a drink, and, and you know, check out the, the water front. I mean, we're, we're going to be right on the water this year in San Diego. It's going to be gorgeous. You know, bring your swimsuit and spend some time in the ocean. Make sure that you hydrate and drink plenty of liquids. And again, bring your business cards with you everywhere. Another tip is uh, some attendees stay at the other hotels nearby for cost reasons. You might want to consider staying in the conference hotel just because it's more practical and increases your way to network. Like you talk to people in the elevators going up and down to your rooms. It's also really nice if you have like an hour you want to just take a nap, you can just run up to the room instead of walking a mile back to your hotel. And if you, you know, the hotel is expensive, but it's worth it. So one way to deal with it is to get a potential roommate. And I didn't have a roommate this year, and so I put a post on the roommate referral blog, and I have a roommate now for all five days that I'm going to be at the conference. So, you know, check out the roommate referral blog and consider staying at the conference hotel. Okay, another tip, you know, we're all volunteers. Anybody making presentations and moderating, for, moderating forums are volunteers. We're not paid for this, and we're not professional presenters. If you like what you hear or see, you know, come up and tell us. We appreciate the feedback, and um, if you don't like what people are saying, you know, my mom always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But if you feel that you must, please be constructive and not cruel. Um, so pace yourself and enjoy yourself. Uh, this is a great time because you're together with fellow translators and all like-minded people and, you know, people who get you. So this is a really energizing, energizing conference for a lot of people. So I'm going to open it up to questions. And any questions that we don't cover during the presentation, we can, I'm going to put on my blog. I'm going to start with the first question, Jill, because I know you don't know the answer because we talked about it and didn't really conclude. Because this year we're having the mobile app, so the question is, you know, is there going to be Wi-Fi available throughout the hotel? Will it be free? If you register for your hotel room through ATA's website, you will have free wireless internet in your hotel room. There's also going to be what we call a Wi-Fi hotspot for ATA. Um, attendees. Now outside of that, if you have a, a browser on your smartphone and you can connect, say, through your, your phone service, then you will have all of those alerts and everything happening as Jill mentioned. But the Wi-Fi, the true Wi-Fi is going to be more of a hot spot. So it's not the, you know, most ideal because ideally you would be having wireless everywhere, but it's going to be great. It worked out so well last year, and people really liked it. And the other good thing is you'll have it in your hotel room, too. So um, with that, I'll turn the next question over. I think Maya's going to ask the next question. Yes, the, the first question we have is from Cloudy. She's a translation student, and she would like to know whether you would recommend that she prepares a resume as well as a, as a student. Um, if you're in your first year, probably not. If you're towards the end, definitely. If you are looking for an internship, definitely. Uh, Kent State has a group of students. Brigham Young has a group of students that they bring every year, and they br bring their resumes and, and pass them out. And it's a great way to meet agencies if, you were, if you're interested in working as a project manager. That's one way of meeting potential agencies to work with. OK, thank you, Lucy. Right, yes, we have another question here from Isabel. Is it a bad idea to arrive late or leave early? In other words, uh, for example, arriving late on Wednesday or leaving early on Saturday, how much would I actually miss if I did that? And what are the events that I should actually absolutely not miss? Well, anything that uh, catches your eye, you should absolutely not miss. Um, I suggest going for the opening session. Um, you, if you don't go to the welcome reception, that's not a big deal. You'll still meet plenty of people during the, your division sessions. Um, I do recommend going to the conference just dance, just because it's a lot of fun. But I know a lot of people who do leave on Saturday afternoon and do miss some sessions, and it's not unheard of. You know, a family, if family needs you, you, you need to go. I hope I answered that properly. 
I think you did great, Jill. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, here's one. Let's see. How important is it really to bring a laptop? I mean, you mentioned that the stuff, you know, you've got to drag it around, it might be stolen, so do I really need to bring it? Uh, if you feel that you can get along without checking your email for a couple days without your laptop, don't bring it. Um, I know the first year I didn't bring my laptop and I felt kind of cut off. I don't carry it with me through the conference. I keep mine in my room and that way I can check my email from clients and respond. Um, but there are people that bring laptops with them to take notes. So I guess it's all a matter of how you work. And so if you feel that you can, you know, do without, by all means, keep it at home. Okay, I have a question from Diana. Uh, she says, there is an orientation session for first-time conference attendees. Is that basically the same as this webinar, or will it be different? Good question. No, it's the exact same thing. Okay. So feel so. free to feel free to skip that <laughs> session. <laughs> You'll end up with nobody there, Jill. <laughs> well, we'll have a few. We just won't have a few. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie's asking, um, thanks for this great webinar. I'm a Canadian translator. Do many potential clients attending the conference that are comfortable working with foreign um, service providers? How international is the conf is, is your conference? It's extremely international. Um, I know Alpha Translations from Canada has come to several of the conferences. Uh, there are agencies from Germany coming, or if anything, company owners from Germany and Europe that come to the conference. So it, it can be very international. I mean, our field is very international. I don't work with any local clients. Okay. Oh, sorry, Mary, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's someone who's asking about the mobile app and paper. So do you still need to bring that paper resume since you'll have the mobile app and you can upload your resume there? Um, I think the mobile app is going to replace it, but if you feel better bringing a paper resume that you can hand to somebody, bring it. I, I, what, what do you think, Mary? I, I think I'd bring some paper this year and see how the mobile app goes. It's always, you know, you can always hand it over and, and there will not be the same job marketplace that we've had in the past. That's the thing to remember with the mobile app. It doesn't mean that you're not going to still hand out your resume. You can do it electronically. You can do it with paper. I think this is going to be great because this way I don't have to bring my plastic holders and have things break on me in my luggage. So, And it's going to save on weight as well. I won't be bringing 100 resumes with me. I'll maybe bring 10. I, yeah, the mobile app sounds terrific. And when you see the list of things it can do, you just feel like it's a robot sitting in your hand. So um, I guess, Maya, you want to ask? Yes. I think we've got time for two or three more. Okay. So... Um... Are you going to include the pre-conference seminars in the CD? That would be a merry question. I think it depends on whether the person wants to be recorded or not. I think that doesn't make sense business-wise because, but I mean, I, I could be wrong. I'm not an ATA person, so. I would need to check. I'm pretty sure they're included, and that you bring up an important point because not all of the sessions will be recorded. I would say about 95%, 96% of them. The ones who, that aren't recorded is that the speaker requested not to be recorded, and we have no control over that. But I'm pretty sure uh, if you really need the answer to that question, I think it's going to be answered on the ATA conference website. But you can also email me, mary at ATA net.org. Um, we'll have another question. I think two more. Did you say, Mary? Here's yeah. one. Will the registration booth be open throughout the entire conference for those who come in for just a day only? Yes. They do have um, one day registration, so the, the registration desk will be open every day. Great. Okay. Do we have time for any more questions, Mary? Um, Let's ask the one about the chapter tables. Okay. Will chapter tables be at the exhibit hall, and do they need to be manned all the time? Can one leave materials on the table overnight? Uh, I, as a former chapter president, I can answer that question. Usually the chapter tables are in the hallways um, of the hotel, and I did leave information on the table you know, just flyers and things like that. And anything of value you should bring with you back up to the room. Um, I know NOTA decided it wasn't worth getting a table because we really didn't get any 
new members through the tables. So um, it's it's a judgment call. But I know that the NIDA, the Northeast or the Nevada Translators Association, they have a little a blinking Las Vegas sign and they have candy and all kinds of stuff. So it's up to the individual chapters what they want to put out. We usually just put out brochures about NODA and you know things like that. One thing I do want to mention about the chapter tables, first as Jill said, not all the chapters elect to to have a table. Um, they don't need to be manned all the time, so you may just end up with a brochure. Uh, you don't leave your resumes, if you're going to bring paper, do not leave them around on, you know, tables and counters throughout the um, hotel because housekeeping staff will come along and sweep them away. So not even overnight, not even for five minutes. It just They just get trashed. It's a waste of your money. So with that, I think, um, I think we're done. OK, okay. any questions that we haven't answered, I will go into detail on my blog, translationmusings.com. And I'm no longer the presenter. <laughs> no, I've made I mean, Mary the presenter now. Okay, Mary, well, can you say that again? Say say what? That any questions are going to be answered oh. on my blog? Yes. Um, for some reason, I didn't have my PowerPoint ready. I'm sorry. Oh. I'll just start oh. off by reminding everyone, if you don't know the actual um, dates of the, the conference, it's October 24th to 27th. And... Um, the 24th is the pre-conference day, just as Jill mentioned. Also, going along with this um, presentation, we have a free webinar that um, actually was done two years ago, but it's all the same information about how to get the most out of your ATA membership. So you've just heard how to get the most out of the conference. There are lots of things you can do to make your membership work a little better for you. I want to mention the next webinar coming up, uh, Chris Durbin and Corinne McKay working with direct clients. And for those of you who don't know Chris or Corinne, they're extremely knowledgeable, having learned through the School of Hard Knocks, so to speak. Um, you can register at www.atanet.org slash webinars. The webinar after that the last one before the conference is putting face-to-face -face networking to work for your business. And Jill mentioned this. It's it's the, just so timely. I, I know Jill talked a lot about networking, and you know, it, you may get the idea that the whole conference is networking, and that it's really hard. It's not, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of a, a how-to going into it. And just as I mentioned, the the uh, conference is October 24th to the 27th. And as you close out, I mentioned this in the beginning, as you leave today's webinar, there is a survey that comes up. And please just evaluate, comment, suggest. The speakers need the feedback, and we need the feedback to determine what we're going to do for future webinars. And as always, ATA is here to help you. This is your association. You can contact, or you can see all the webinars at www.atanet.org. You can also find uh, staff members on About Us at the ATA website, so www.atanet.org, and just look for About Us, and the staff members are there. And please contact any of us uh, whenever you, you feel that you don't understand something about the association. We, we can't create your business for you. We can't make your business work. But we're really happy to answer questions that you, know, you have about the association. And with that, I'd like to close the webinar, ask everyone to please come back. We appreciate your attendance, and we very much appreciate Jill's presentation today. And as she said, the follow-up questions are going to be on her blog, Musings from an Overworked Translator. And it's translationmusings.com. Good point. So that's a great place. I mean, Jill did such a terrific blog entry last year after this same webinar. So please go there. You'll find, if, even if you didn't ask the question, there's going to be something there that you wanted to know that you didn't know you wanted to know. So with that, we'll close, and I hope you all have a great day.
Okay.